For much of the 1990s, WorldCom CEO Bernard Ebers' chief strategy for growing the business was to acquire dozens of increasingly large telecom firms. The zenith of these acquisitions was a $37 billion merger with MCI in 1998. By the end of the decade, it is estimated that WorldCom handled nearly half of all internet and data communications and owned a third of all data cables in the U.S. The industry quickly took a downturn, however, and after a merger with Sprint was denied due to antitrust laws, there were no more firms to acquire, and WorldCom was left to rely on the leadership of Ebers. With so much of the company's estimated $185 billion market cap tied to continuously rising stock prices, Ebers demanded that the company meet what were progressively unrealistic targets, and CFO Scott Sullivan did whatever was needed to appease Ebers. Beginning in 1999, at the direction of Sullivan, the company began implementing the relatively unsophisticated accounting practices of classifying operating expenses as long-term capital investments and counting reduced reserve money as revenue. By doing so, WorldCom inflated its own assets by as much as $11 billion. After Ebers retired in April of 2002, an internal audit team discovered the discrepancies and an already suspicious SEC began an investigation. By July of 2002, less than a month after the improper accounting was revealed, WorldCom filed for bankruptcy. With assets valued at $107 billion, this filing dwarfed that of Enron's bankruptcy in the fall of 2001 and, at the time, was the largest in U.S. history. Ebers and Sullivan were both charged with and found guilty of a number of counts of fraud and violating securities laws. Ebers was sentenced to 25 years, and Sullivan received five years in jail in exchange for taking the stand.